First off, I want to start by saying that I do own more than one t-shirt. I do own more than just this shirt. Uh, <laughs> it's just the one that's most comfortable when I'm sitting out here in the shed. Uh, having some difficulty getting this guy lit. I want to talk about my second pipe. I've been wanting to make this video for a while. Uh, I, I uh, you know, I, I learned a lot from this pipe, and I've been wanting to discuss what I've learned. I did a cleanup job. It was the first pipe that I restored. It, it wasn't really a restoration. It was more of just a cleanup. At the time, because it was the first one, it felt like a restoration. I took a lot of time with it, very careful. Um, learned a lot of things just in the cleanup alone, so it felt like a bigger deal than it was. I am talking about, well, first, this is my first pipe. I've shown these before. You can watch another video if you want to. My first pipe, this is Sam, or Sam, this one is Sam. It's a no-name pipe. I don't know who made it. Uh, workhorse little thing. I love it. I still smoke the crap out of it. That's Sam. I've got my nifty, my nifty little uh, pipe rest here that Al Wenzel made for me. My second, second pipe is Ed, or Eddie. It's a GBD prehistoric. See if I can get the focus here, we'll see. There's a small gold emblem there. I hope you can see it clearly, I don't know. A pot shape, so the number on it is 9437. Um, we'll try and show that. Don't know if you can pick it up or not. Grain pattern is interesting to me. You know, it's not, it's kind of mottled looking there, and you don't really see grain per se until you get to the front of the bowl, the heel or whatever it might be. And then you come around like this. So it's almost like like the grain kind of hugs the bowl like that, right? Like a hand. See that? Handsome little pipe. I really like this thing. Um, I haven't measured it. I don't have a tape on hand right here. I don't know how long it is. But um, I wanted I wanted to do a video on this thing because it's for me it's a cool learning experience. Um, initially, I bought the pipe same way I buy all the pipes. Is the first thing that I'm looking for is something that talks to me, something that just jumps out at me. All of the pipe you're going to see a million pipes. I've, I've figured this out by now. Um, that you're crazy about, that you, you think are, there's a lot of pipes that talk to you, so to speak, right? You go into a new place and you want every pipe that looks nice, like this. But if you sit and mull it over and just kind of really look at them for a little bit longer, take a little more time perusing what's available, I find that one, usually it's just one. There might be two, if I'm lucky, maybe. Usually it's just one pipe it's really standing out. It's it's kind of, it's like it's whispering, you know, like, like pick me, pick me, look look at me, you know, hold me. Um, and that's how this one was. There aren't a lot of options where I live for buying pipes that are new or even restored estate pipes. There's one, there are two places I can buy pipes that need to be restored. One has a very small selection that rotates slowly. Um, but sometimes there's some cool stuff in there. The other has, at any given time, they might have 20 pipes, give or take, but they're trashed. They're, they're really, really, and I've got a story about this too that I, with another pipe that I'm gonna get into, but there's, a, there's an antique store that has amazing things, um, but they're run down. These pipes are, you know, I'm talking broken stems, cracked shanks, uh, absolute, they're trash, right? They're not in smokable condition, and some of them it would take close to 50 bucks to get them in smokable condition if you were to try and do it, you know, properly. 
unless I just don't know what I'm doing, somebody out there knows some tricks I don't know about how to obtain material or tools or whatever at a, for a cheaper price. Anyhow, I got Ed from the first spot. And it he was dirty. He was very, very heavily smoked. Um, he talks to me. It, it, it just it's, it jumped out at me. And initially I said, I'm not going to go crazy and buy this pipe right now. I made myself wait a week and sit on it because it was the second pipe that I had bought and I was feeling this impulse to go out and buy every cool looking pipe that I saw, you know. Um, I intentionally refrained from shopping for pipes online because I knew that everyone, there, there's, it's infinite, you're going to fall in love with all kinds of them. So I limited myself to pop pipes that I could find locally in the area. I wanted something with a local connection. And when I saw this guy, I was crazy about him. And um, I made myself wait a week. And then went back in, see if they still had it. And they did, so I went ahead and bought it. The first thing that jumped out of me was this stem. A clear stem. I had never, in, in, even in photographs or film, I had never seen a pipe with a clear stem. And it struck me as kind of a cheesy gimmick kind of thing. Um, but at the same time, kind of a gimmick that was actually cool. Like they were trying too hard to be cool and it just came off looking chintzy. Uh, but I couldn't help but admit that, that it, did, it did seem kind of cool, right? And I, I, I kept thinking of what it might be like to watch the smoke go through the stem. Like that's gotta be pretty cool looking. Uh, turns out you don't really see the smoke going through the stem. Um, it just it clouds up so fast you don't get the effect that I was expecting but it, anyways I brought it home and my initial thought was how do I clean this this stem without without ruining it because it is transparent right everything is everything's gonna be visible any flaws that you that you create are gonna be visible and it looked like a different material from the first pipe that I got Sam, that stem is clearly a different material. After some research, I discovered that this is vulcanite, or, or what or is sometimes called ebonite, kind of a rubber composite. And Ed has uh, a Perspex stem, which I think is like a plastic composite. It feels like some kind of plastic. And sure enough, it, my initial thought was to try and clean this thing um, using a, a not caustic but very strong chemicals um, because when it comes to cleaning things I'm, I'm familiar with cleaning carburetors and you have tiny little channels and bores and, and uh, cylinders that that you, you need to get extremely clean in order for it to work properly so that was kind of my frame of reference was carburetor work carburetor restoration and my first thought the the stem on this thing was packed with tar really really bad I tried using saliva I tried using soft scrub I tried going very gentle and not using any harsh chemicals start with light stuff and then work into the harsher chemicals as necessary and before thank God before I used alcohol which is what I've been using to clean up Sam I did a little research and discovered that you're not supposed to use alcohol in a perspex stem at all It will, it will actually, supposedly, it will create what they call crazing. It will create these tiny little spider web, like fissure cracks, all inside the stem. Um, and, and basically destroy the look of it. I found this out by reading a blog called RebornPipes.com, which I will probably be talking about some more. It's a guy named Stephen Laug or Log A L A U G. Not sure how to pronounce his name. He is an incredible wealth of information. He has on his site. The guy has restored, I don't know how many pipes, but it's a lot. He does a lot of intensive work to pipes. Great website. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link in the description. Rebornpipes.com, I think. After 
a few hours of trying everything I could to get that stem clean and and very carefully very cautiously bristle pipes non bristled pipes taper or, or cleaners I mean bristled pipe cleaners non bristled tapered I'm soaking it in vinegar apple cider vinegar all kinds of things nothing was getting it clean finally I came across his blog and and uh, or the article on his blog where he used acetone I tried that nail polish remover it did the trick it still took patience and a lot of, of pipe cleaners but it finally got it cleaned out um, the tenon was still dirty and it, it is you know you can kind of see it now the tenon was very dirty with tar and would not come clean no matter what I did Um, eventually I got to the point where I decided the whole thing is hidden inside the shank of the pipe so I got a, a drill bit that was just large enough to clean out the tar and uh, by hand I turned it in there I figured if I mess it up it's not going to be visible because it's inside the shank you're not going to see it the closest fit that I had with a drill bit was just large enough to slightly shave the inside of the draft or not the draft hole but of the bore on the tenon um, but it didn't destroy it it did scratch it enough so that it has an opaque look but it also cleaned all that nasty orange brown crap out of there and it didn't damage the pipe in any real sense so that's a win, right? Um, finally, the stem was clean. I love this pipe. Gorgeous. So next I moved on to the bowl, the stumble, whatever. I cleaned the cake out of it. Um, I, I know that some people leave a certain amount of cake in there I don't do that with the pipes that I'm restoring because I want to see the condition I want to know if there are any gouges any fills on the inside I don't know if people fill pipes on the inside of the bowls or not but I want to see if there is any cracks I want to know the condition of that chamber inside before I ever use it right um, so I cleaned them down to the wood and that's what I did with this one I, I bought a reaming kit and I reamed the charcoal the uh, cake that was in there all the way down to the wood and sure enough there were these small hairline cracks heat stress cracks inside of it nothing crazy or over the top um, but there were some in there one of them appeared to be running kind of over the like it might be running over the rim itself I know now from looking at it closer and, and, and working with it that it's not it was just kind of a grain thing that seemed it, it kind of blends in with one of the hairline cracks that was there so anyhow when I cleaned this thing up everybody suggested using Murphy's oil as an alternative to alcohol because alcohol will strip the stain off of the outside of your bowl the, the finish and or the stain will come off if you use alcohol um, so the recommendation that I kept coming across was use Murphy's oil now maybe I used Murphy's oil um, incorrectly I used it at full concentration I didn't dilute it and it pulled the stain off as well uh, they say that it's a great alternative to alcohol if you want to preserve the stain in my humble opinion this is false if you want to strip the stain one of the best most effective easiest quickest ways is to use Murphy's oil at full concentration I've gotten to the point now where if I'm intentionally trying to strip stain off of a pipe, I go straight for Murphy's oil. It's that effective at stripping, removing the stain from your pipe. I discovered that with this one when I did it by accident. Very carefully with a toothbrush, cleaning all over the thing, getting the dirt and grime off, wiping it off with a dry paper towel, not a wet one. Kept doing that. 
um, when I got the rim cleaned up, uh, it, it revealed this gorgeous grain pattern running this way across the rim. Kind of looks like a tiger stripe kind of thing, but running, you know, like this across the rim. And the original rim, it's got this really nice, um, I would think of it as a chamfered edge, where the edge is, instead of being straight flat, it kind of rolls in like this. It looks gorgeous. It's another thing that stood out to me about this pipe when I first got it. Um, but across that, across there are these grains that run straight, that look like tiger stripe. And the original stain had this almost shiny blood red kind of look. It was really cool color, and I was really hoping to preserve it, so I was very, very careful when scrubbing this thing with Murphy's to keep as much of the original stain there as possible. I wanted that redness on the rim. I really wanted to keep it. It was an interesting contrast with the brown on the rest of the bowl. You would think those two colors wouldn't mix, but this, this did. It had an old-school vintage look to it that I just liked. Unfortunately, the Murphy's stripped the, enough of the stain off that the bowl was basically kind of a blonde color, um, which was a big bummer. And I thought, well, I'm going to I'm gonna fix this. I'm going to get some red stain and put it along the rim a light amount very carefully. So I, uh, <laughs> instead of going out and buying some, I looked around in, in my stash of what I've already got, and I saw a shade that looked, looked like it would be perfect. And I put it on there, and instead it turned the bowl kind of an orange color, which was uh, not at all what I was looking for. I quickly wiped off the excess, let it dry, and I tried to do a mix-match thing with another red. Total failure. It, it was way too dark. Stripped it all down again using Murphy's oil and then some alcohol. Um, kept playing around and eventually got so tired of messing with it that I just stayed with what I had, which is this really nice chocolate color. Now it took a couple of days of drying out completely but when it was fully dried I thought that looks pretty good. Um, it's got this real pretty chocolate brown color not too far from the shade that it originally was. The rim however went a dark brown and I was not able after repeated attempts I was not able to return that to any kind of a lighter brown without stripping the stain off again and I'm, I'm done doing that with this pipe. So I lost the reddish color that I liked so much there, and, um, and, and it's dark enough now that you can't even really see that tiger stripe grain pattern running across the edge of the rim, which is a bummer. But there was a pleasant surprise. The first time that I used the pipe out in direct sunlight, I discovered that it did retain a little bit of the redness that I had tried to put into it. If it's cloudy skies, if it's artificial light, you don't see it. It just has this real, real pretty kind of chocolate color, you know. When I set the pipe, if you, if you have it in direct sunlight, it kind of takes on a red velvet hue. That's what it looks like to me, is red velvet cake, if you've ever seen that. Um, but only in direct natural sunlight. Great looking pipe, man. I love it.